What's up and welcome to another episode of It's Tipped Up Fishing. My name is Keaton Ditchfield and today I will be fishing with Hansi Meyer at Specimen Academy Lakes. Specimen Academy Lakes is a fantastic place to get your teeth into specimen angling. It's got some fun challenges and some big fish. Specimen Academy Lakes is in South Africa. It's just outside Bronkospreit and is about a one hour and 20 minute drive outside of Joburg. It is quite a pleasant drive with the roads being in pretty good condition. Specimen Academy Lakes have got two main lakes. We were fishing the bottom lake on swim one and two. Let's get to it. So we've just arrived here at Specimen Academy Lakes, which is run, this is used to be African Blessings, eh? Yeah. It's now run by the Specimen Academy with their awesome message of spreading the, the sport of specimen fishing making it available to everyone, making information, tips, tricks, venues, everything like available to everyone. They made like a really great community and WhatsApp groups and all that kind of stuff where everyone supports everyone basically. And we've got Julio at the head of it with Mr. Shiraz Ismail there with SNZ Tackle being a big supporter. And then we've got Hansi over here who's Mr. CMFCarp.co.za. So yeah, we're here to fish it. I've never fished here, neither is Hansi. And um, what we're gonna do is try to fish it for the first time and test our first time skills. Capabilities. Yeah, you can only fish a venue for the first time once. <laughs> so <laughs> it gives you a lack of excuse to blank, but that's not why we're here. So what is nice. These some eh? fish out the water. Yeah, it's relative. It's just clear enough to to get a carp's attention from a slight distance, but just murky enough so they can't see your rigs very clearly. So Hans, what's happening? Why have you got plastic in your hand? So what we're going to do is, we're going to take this across to the opposite bank, tie it to the reed where we want our spot, so we can more or less mark our spot. So every time we take the rods, we put them in the same spot exactly. So when you're drawing fish in, you know they're going to be in the same spot all the time. And just remember to take it off when you go. So off we went on the boat with the Deeper Chirp Plus and we found a lot of weed on the opposite bank, like a lot. But eventually we found a couple of clear patches, four clear patches, and decided to chuck in our bait in those four clear patches that we found. Tying off our little markers, our little plastic bag markers so that we wouldn't forget where it was. Then a few handfuls of Hunty Special Bait over each spot and then we were off to the bank to prep our rigs. But before that could happen, our battery died. Our full battery died. This is the expert fisherman here. He thought, don't bring the, don't bring the, the oars because we don't need the oars. We don't need the oars. For a trip. Yes, and we've got a full battery. And everything. Gage, going yeah, come. <laughs> Put your work in. Now we're doing a full 360 here. Thank you for your efforts. Okay, I'm nearly there. Go to this side of the boat to get it get further. And then you're on. And you're on. Oh, don't pull a poop string either. Don't pull a poop string. So now we are safe on the bank. I decided to get my PVA bag rig out. Now I went to the PVA bag rig because putting your rig in a PVA bag guarantees that your rig is going to be perfectly presented even in thick weed like we were fishing over. I did a slight difference to the rig by using these a Nash hook kicker. Adding a Nash hook kicker to a pinpoint twister Nash hook makes your rig incredibly aggressive. It turns that hook immediately as soon as it's in the fish's mouth. How do you test if your rig is aggressive or not? Is run your hook link over your palm or your fingers. If your hook turns and hooks your fingers in a very little time, then you know your rig is going to catch a fish. So now we've got to put our PVA bag rig into some PVA bags. We've got some Rod Hutchinson medium PVA bags with some Nash Citrus 2mm pellets. These pellets are delicious, they smell delicious and are packed full of carp attractors. 
So we're going to use those pellets to cover our rig inside the PVA bag so that when we lower the whole thing into the water, it hits the bottom, dissolves and then leaves our perfectly presented rig at the bottom ready to catch a fish. Then we took the PVA bag to the next level by using some CC Moore liquid bloodworm compound. Basically, we took a syringe and syringed that liquid into the PVA bag. It's PVA friendly, so that liquid would leach out while the rig waits for the fish. So what we're doing now, hello lovely folks, you should be able to hear me from there, is Hansi's helping me take both lines out at the same time. And we're doing two at the same time, which is usually a recipe for Disaster. what? Disaster. So this way, working with a friend to take stuff out is a great way to blame your friend. So if it goes wrong, Hansi, it's your fault. The furthest spot. Nice as you could see the you could see the bag going in. Yeah. Okay, next spot, here we go. That would have been a catastrophe. Well, that's a f up. So I just put both rods on that spot. And that's exactly what I did. I moved spots slightly to the left if you're looking out from the bank towards the reeds, and I put my rig there. Okay, well, that was a. I don't know. Bit of a step up. I don't have enough line on my little reels, so. I had to move a bit closer, found another clear spot on the deeper, and now that's my, that's my uh, choice for my eggs in one little basket. I don't usually fish like that, but I know a lot of people do fish like that. So, not that much bait out there, but let's give it a go. Fisherman, here's a little quick tip top top tip. See that? There's my bivy. So when you get to a venue, don't set up in the middle of the day, unless there's rain coming or something like that, but don't set up in the middle of the day. Rather, wait until the sun is where it is about now, over there, about five o'clock, four, half past four, and then set it up, because then it's going to be a much more pleasant process, and you can set it up without sweating like a pig. So, little update. We have dropped in three rods. It's only taken us four hours to do that. <laughs> the giggling in the background is hunty. <laughs> but we are quite confident in our rods. I'm confident in my little spot over there. Hansi's quite confident in, confident in his spot. And what we did is we got the, the deeper and we put it on its narrowest setting, on its seven degrees setting. So we could see directly underneath the deeper and that's about it. So about, a, I don't know, a two foot circle. And that's how we knew exactly where to put it because there's quite a lot of weed here. So anyone who wants to fish Specimen Academy lakes, there's a lot of weeds. So you've got to be very specific on where you put your, your rigs. So we have found little, um, little gaps, maybe a meter by two meters, meter by meter, meter by four meters. I'm just talking about the different spots and we have lowered our rigs exactly where, to, where it was. And we lowered our rigs underneath the deeper so we could watch the rig go down because there's no point in seeing that there's a clear spot here and then dropping a rig somewhere that isn't right here. So that's what we've done. Apparently this lovely venue is a night catching venue. So holding thumbs. It's a bit of a storm brewing over there. So 
Hans has put up his tent over there and I'm putting up my NGT Fortress X. If you'd like a 10% discount on that, get hold of me and I'll get hold of you or get hold of the right person to get you a 10% discount on an NGT Fortress X Vivi. It is the one I have and I've had for years and I love it. Vivi's up. Vivi's up. Now I have to set up my bed chair. <laughs> I'm in between bed chairs. I'm going from a camp master super wide one that was great but it was just too big and now I'm gonna go to something quite exciting. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'm gonna wait till it arrives and I'll do a nice video on it so you guys can know exactly why I picked it. And yeah, but for now, level ground booty or else I'm gonna be rolling down the hill into the water <laughs> the whole night. Watching the Tarantala settle in for the evening, we followed suit. The sun went down and then the nightlife woke up. The beautiful sounds of Specimen Academy are awesome. There are just so many frogs, there's jackals, we heard owls. It was just a lovely evening. Coffee hands? Yes, please. So, a relatively uneventful night last night. Um, we had uh, some deets on my left hand rod, but it was a crab, so I had to redo it. Fun. And then Hansi also got one one take but then it was a hook pull so it was unfortunate so we almost got fish okay so when you blank you learn things so i've learned two things the first thing I will explain to you now it's ter in terms of rig placement, feeding areas, feeding potentially the wrong areas and making sure you're on the right spot every time so that you put your feed and your bait in the same spot. This is it. So what we're looking at is Swim 2's fishing area. We have our reeds that are above the water at the bottom. The blue section is the flat spot of the deeper water. The green is the weeded area and the red spots are flat spots that we have found that the carp have created. So what we would do, we'd go out on the boat, find a flat spot and bait it up. The yellow there is the bait. Then we go back to the bank, set up our rigs and then come back. We'd find the spot again and then we'd drift off of it and place our rig on what we thought was the same spot, but it wasn't. So we'd have the bait in one flat spot and the rig in the other. Then we'd do the same thing for the other rods. So find the spot, bait it up, go do our rig and drop the rig off in the wrong spot. Now this mistake is very easy to make because of how water messes with our minds and distance, but there's a very easy solution to this. All you gotta do is drop off your bait and your rig at the same time. Okay, so what's the second thing I learned is I ran out of line because I cast, I didn't cast, I put my rod down all the way down the E. So I've only got a couple of turns of line. I've got just enough to have a fish run about 10 meters before I run out of line. So I don't want the fish going anywhere beyond that and I don't want to lose these fantastic rods. So what did I do? I tied my rod to my pod. So with that, I know that worst case scenario, I can keep my rod. The line will, might be break, might break, um, but I will still have my rod attached to the, to the pod. And the thing that I learned with that is which knot you tie it onto. Because if you tie the wrong knot on, on your, um, onto your rod, you could lose the fish because you'll be fiddling with rods and stuff like that. 
fiddling with knots and all that kind of things. So what knot should you use? The knot you should use is a cowboy knot. This is the name of it over here. I forgot the name of it right now. But if you use that knot, it's a quick release. So here's the tag end. Can you see, let me find the camera. Here's the tag end. You just put it like that and it's gone. Pick up the rod, sorted. So that rod or that knot is so brilliant because it's designed for horses. So cowboys and horse people, if a horse is freaking out, they can't say, wait horsey, I know you're scared of the snake, stop freaking out, I'm just untying this knot. They can't do that. So that knot was designed for quick pull and you can take your horse away from the whatever you tied it to or for us quick pull and you can fight the fish and you don't lose the fish so that is the knot so I will post a link to that knot in the description um, so you guys can also know how to tie it it's also a fantastic knot to use for your boats when you're tying a boat off to a jetty you tie that knot and then if you're onto a fish or something quick pull and you're out done Denzel Washington and you're onto the fish so that is our session here at this lovely Specimen Academy Bottom Lake. We learned a lot, we had a lot of fun, it is a beautiful venue, um, we saw plenty of fish, beautiful bird life and we had a wonderful time. So if you'd like to support Tip Top Fishing please make sure to subscribe or consider becoming a Tip Top Patron. Every cent that made that is made from Patreon will be dedicated to make bigger and better videos for you guys. So if you can head over to Patreon and dedicate maybe three dollars a month five dollars a month every little bit makes a massive difference at the end of the day and my patrons have already helped me go to better places and we will find out which places i have gone to with the future content so thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it make sure to go over to cmfcarp.co.za and use the code in the link below to get a 10 percent discount on anything there that's nash signet uh solar uh all kinds of brands there's shit tons of brands there make sure to go there and use the code get your 10 percent discount and that's it for this episode thank you so much for watching till next time tight lines guys awesome.